be corresponding to what we learned today, talk about the autocorrelation. So uh, let's go over this question. We use a data set called the US, uh, should it be gasoline? US gas data set. It should be in the uh, zip file of the Patachi uh, folder. So part A, run such an all or less regression. Uh, right here, first of all, these variables you have to create by yourself. For example, say the left-hand side is a log QMG divided by car. Car should be number of cars. QMG should be uh, quantity per gallon, um, miles per, I forgot, something like that. <laughs> uh, uh, so basically, you, you need, based on those variables, QMG divided by CER, calculate the ratio and then take log so that create a left-hand side of variable. Similarly, you need to create this variable, uh, X1, X2, so on and so forth. Actually, right here, if you like, you can just call it uh, Y. And once you created this variable, you can just call it X1, X2, X3, right? <laughs> to make the name easier. Otherwise, that's too long. So anyway, you need to create those variables, Y, X1, X2, X3 first. And they're wrong all or less regression, right? That's part A. Part B, plot the residual analysis. Right here, make sure you plot over time. The time, check out the data set. There must be a variable uh, stand for time, probably probably over a year. So uh, uh, keep an eye on the variable to make sure uh, how the variable coded. If the if the variable is a capital Y-E-A-R, then make sure it's a capital Y-E-A-R. It's a little Y-E-A-R type of y, little Y, right? Make sure the variable is exactly the same as uh, the way uh, coded in the data set. That's uh, uh, plot residual analysis. Basically the codes corresponding to right here. Codes correspond, codes correspond right here. And uh, part C, perform a Durbin Watson test. Make sure you write down H now, H1 in your, in your decision. Uh, this corresponds to the right here. Library LM test and the DW test all or less right here. And so uh, first of all, install LM test. Uh, right, LM test stands for linear model test. And so, uh, last week is a BP test. <laughs> this week, DW test. Both of them, they are within this uh, LM test uh, library, right? So, so make sure you install that library. Right here, a little detail is uh, we use alternative two-sided because DW test, DW test uh, by default, they use a one-sided test. So that for us, we want to do a two-sided test. Uh, the difference will be one-sided test will be, you know, row is larger than zero. Right here, we care about two-sided test. Row is non-zero. No, row is not equals to zero, right? So that's why we use a specified alternative two-sided test. Otherwise, uh, let me show you. Without the option, without the option, for example, let me show you if you... If you do DW test all or less, by default, by default, is testing row is greater than zero, right? That's a one-sided test. That's why that's why we want to specify alternative is a two-sided to make sure you got the uh, correct p-value, right? So that's a little detail. Make sure you use an alternative two-sided. Um, that's Thurbin Watson test. Uh, Part D, run a GLS regression to correct the result. Uh, GLS, for assumption three, GLS corresponding to right here, right? So just replace the variable your Y and your X. Everything else you can just copy and paste. So specify COR, AR1, make sure it's a AR1 process and a method I use on maximum likelihood estimators and so forth. You can just copy and paste on everything else. Just replace your Y and X, right? So that's the GOS. Uh, one detail, another detail is uh, uh, this homework, we, we have two parts, question one, question two. We use a different data set. The, you know, see, the second one, we use a US uh, gas. The first data set, we use a earning data set, right? So two parts. So right here in my sample codes, you might notice, for example, at the very beginning, I loaded the data set, I called the data one. 
I attach the data, attach data one, right? And uh, at the very end, after I done my work, I use a command detach. See, it's more like a sandwich. When I, when I, as a very, very beginning, I attach a T, you know, T T C H, right? Attach. And after I'm done, I detach my data. In other words, you know, the usage of attach data is uh, attach data into my memory so that I can I can use all those variable names, right? After I'm done, I you know I I can you know detach the variable so that basically can clean it out so that uh, save some memories or you know try to avoid confusion, right? Later on, when I do my second work, I create a data two attach data two. And at the very end, I detach data too, right? So this is a suggested if you are working on multiple data set. So that because, because sometimes, for example, your data, data set number one, data set number two might, might have a same variable, for example, called education, for example, right? So when you, when you ask computer to show me education, then computer, you know, gonna, uh, gonna be confused do you mean education in your data set number one or data set number two, right? So that right here, you know, it's a, when you're working on, you know, more, more than one data set, especially they might have some same variable names in common, right? So that you'd better, for example, focus on same one, you know, attach, detach, so on the first. And you do the second one, attach, detach, so on the first. Beforeers, beforeers, I didn't use a detach because, uh, for example, when you compile those words, once once you you know when you compile into HTML, you, you know when you work uh, compile second one, you know this kind of detail actually it doesn't matter. <laughs> so that when you exit to the uh, R Studio, actually, you know it's gone. It's, uh, everything will be cleaned out from the memory because beforeers we were always working on uh, the same data sets, right? Right here. For this homework, we use a two disk data set. That's why you know if you like, you would better use it. Attach, detach, attach, detach. You have to make sure, right? Uh, that's also actually this is also uh, answers the question. For example, if you attach the same data set again, and again, computer going to show you this kind of message. See, uh, POS equal to six. If you attach again, POS equal to seven, right? If you see this kind of message, may I run? First of all, no worry. These are just a uh, computer just uh, trying to remind you you. You attach the same data set again, and again, so that uh, just make sure the you know your your new data is the same as old data, so that you're not covering the something you don't want to. <laughs> just make sure you you know this is exactly what you want, right? So that's why before I told you should answer is like if you see this kind of a, a message, you can ignore it because of when we when you compile into HTML, actually it won't happen, right? Second of all. If you do not want to see this kind of a message, and then the little trick is that you can simply detach, detach. If you attach, for example, six times, then later on, you know, so that uh, it should be, you know, <laughs> it's gone, right? Basically like a sandwich, attach, detach. That's the detail. Uh, all right, that's our homework number six. Uh, I just updated the due dates of this homework. It should be uh, from today. Today, 28th. This homework should be due on... Right, right. today is here, 28th. Right. Right. This homework should be on November 10th. So from, from today, you have two weeks. Uh, all right. 